Release the Kraken! Greetings, fellow game designers, Ron here at Lame Duck Studios. In the previous tutorial, I went ahead and set up a uh, single controller for our select screen kind of widget here. And here it goes. And of course, if I pick you know, a spot, it does whatever. I don't have any uh, things here to kind of represent those, but it's okay. We'll uh, do something simple for that. In this one, let's go ahead and add in the second uh, controller. It's a bit of, bit of setup, but I think we can be able to get it done uh, pretty quick. So. Okay, and then the thing we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and open up the menu uh, game mode. Okay, so once you're in here, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of my tick function. I don't need that for now. And let's see, we're making our widget, but before we actually make our widget, we actually want to create the second controller. And that's actually pretty simple. Go ahead and pull these guys over, uh, pull off a begin play, and it's create player. And there is a create player function right here. Add that in. And that's pretty much it. All done. Wrap it up. See you later. Okay, I'm kidding. It's, it's not all it's not, not all there is to it, but uh, I want to kind of talk about this piece and just clean this up real quick. About create player, what it does is it creates a new uh, player controller and assigns it to the second player. Uh, the ID here, it's set to negative one by default. And you see right here, it says that uh, a value of negative one means that it will just take the um, the current player controller and make a duplicate of it and add it to the array. Uh, so if you have instance zero, it'll make instance one. If you have instance one, it'll make instance two and so on. Now, a thing to be aware of is that we do have a default player controller and we also have the one that we created. So create player creates a new instance of the one that you have set in your game mode. So our game mode, if I go back and we uh, open this up here, we have our menu controller set as our player controller. So when it creates the new instance for our player, it's going to create based off of this controller, not the default one. If you want to use the default one, of course, you can set this back to the default. If you do that, it'll make an instance of the default one, and it will not use the uh, one that we set up. So just be sure that you have yours in there. Okay. Uh, I usually do one for the menu, and then I also have one for the end game because I have different functionality for each controller. Okay, so that should set the second player for us with the appropriate controller. Let's go ahead and hit compile, save real quick. Now let's make it so that we can actually see our controller. So let's go into our um, widget here. Now the way it works in Unreal is you can't actually have two players talking to a single widget. Uh, the widget is assigned to a player controller and only one player is ever assigned to that controller. Uh, you can't split the control of a widget across two different players. It doesn't exactly work that way. And what that means is if I were to do this and remember that how this is using the internal uh, navigation system. So if I have controller one here moving around, I don't know if you can actually hear it, but I'm pressing controller two. Even though that we created the other player controller, um, nothing's happening because this is assigned to this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is actually a workaround. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over to the side here and we have our highlight zero. I'm actually going to create a second highlight uh, for each one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and right click go ahead and duplicate. I'll just move this up in the hierarchy here. And I'm going to go ahead and give this one a different color and a different name. So we have highlight zero, and then I have highlight zero dash one. I'm going to put an underscore on the first one. I'll do uh, player one. And then under this one, I will do player two. See what I'm getting at? We're going to do that for each one of these. Let's go ahead and change the color of the second one. I'm going to grab that, come over to the brush. And really, you can color these any way that you like. I'm going to do green for... Um, all of player one, and I'll do red for player two. So I can actually go ahead and just grab the player two. Uh, control click for those. 
and then in the brush color let's make player two we'll make it red okay and then for player one I'll grab all them and let's make that uh, green okay let's jump over to our graph up at the top here we have um, our array set up for a button zero and our array set up for our uh, highlights we need to make a second highlight so I'm going to come over and I'm just going to duplicate this And I'm going to grab my highlight twos, layer two highlights, just drag those in. Promote that to a variable. I'm going to name this uh, highlight list uh, layer two. Grab this one, uh, player one. Maybe uh, consistent with my naming here. Just move that up in the ranks and set this up. And then down here for our cursor index, we have our cursor one index. We're going to go ahead and make our cursor two index. So, cursor two index. Compile and save. Let's come down here. We happen to have this set up for reading off of one uh, button. So this is our button list. And it's checking through the array and then setting up uh, visibility for the first list. Well, we need to do this for our second list. Let's move all this out of the way. Uh, this piece I'll move over here. I'm going to add on another pin. I'll add pin 2 to this one, and then I'll break this for pin 1. This piece, go ahead and duplicate that whole section. And then off of the second um, sequence, go ahead and plug that in. And it's okay if it's reading the same button list because the buttons are going to be the same. But over here for the highlight, I'm going to swap this highlight out for highlight two. So drag that in, highlight two. And then this one, cursor index, is going to be set here. Okay. Um, then over here, we have this uh, section that's checking for whether or not the object has focus. Since only one player can ever have focus of a widget, this is not going to work for us. I'm just going to go ahead and break uh, this. I know we hooked it up a second ago, but you know, one thing at a time. Come back over here. We're going to have to change these again since we can't have focus of it. We're going to have to find another way of figuring out who is who. And the easiest way of doing that is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and just delete the focus. And uh, we're going to see if the current index is the same as the um, cursor index. So I'm going to drag off. We'll just do equal, equal. We'll get equal integer. Plug it into our condition. And this will be cursor 1 index. And then down here is going to be cursor 2. So equal, equal. Cursor 2. And then plug that one in. Go ahead and compile, save it, and hit play. So we should at this point have a single cursor. And if I move, you can see one of them updates. If I try to move the other one, um, it's 
player controller 2 is updating the same one. Do you see that? So this is controller 1 and 2. Now they're moving the same one. So progress is progress. We have two controllers working on the same widget. But that's not exactly what we want. We want uh, two controllers and each one have its own independent cursor. Well, let's go ahead and set that up. So let's jump back in. And come over to our uh, button updates. So what these do is, of course, it's updating cursor index 1. But we also needed to update index 2. Problem is, we have two controllers, right? So how are we going to update it? Well, the easiest way to do that is to pass in which controller has updated this function. So what we'll have to do is um, select our move cursor left here, come down to the inputs, and then this is going to be uh, controller. Change this from a Boolean to the player controller type. Remember that we do have two different player controllers. We have the default one, which is player controller, and the one that we created, which is our menu uh, controller. So I come down to uh, my menu controller, use object reference. Okay. Let's move this out just a bit, make some room on this. All this logic will be duplicated. I'm going to swap out the cursors for these. So this will be cursor index 2, cursor index 2. And the way we're going to check it is object. Um, so pull off of here, I'm going to do equal object. And then this is going to be um, get player controller. And we'll leave this as instance zero. So it should be the first uh, instance of our current player controller. And this is going to be branched. So branch. So if it's the first one, it goes there. Let's just move this stuff back. If it's the other, it'll go here. Let's save it and then it's just rinse and repeat. So I'll make some room. Duplicate that. And then we're going to add the input to our cursor. So hit the plus button. What's great is Unreal Store is the last one we used, so I don't have to retype that in, but I'll just change the name here to controller. Plug it in. And we'll get the branch. Should have copied that when I duplicated the other piece, but I did not. Look at that. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and swap our controllers. So cursor one and cursor, sorry, uh, cursor one should be on top and cursor two should be the second. And then this can both be button list because we're using the same button list. And then rinse and repeat. Not worried about the row length, that should be the same. So now let's hop into our player controller. So go ahead and hit compile and save, minimize that jump into the controller and inside of our player controller 
we need to pass in which controller is who. So remember that our, we're using our menu controller here, and our menu controller is being duplicated by our um, create player function. So what that does is creating a new instance of this. So all we have to do is pass in itself. So let's come over to here, and you'll see that now that uh, we have our cursor left, right, up, and down, there's a controller option, and all you're doing is passing in the self option here. So I do self, just pass in self. And you can use the same self, or you can uh, make a copy of it. It doesn't matter. Pilot, save it, and hit play. And if I press one controller, so it updated, um, but now it's back to the other one. So we have an issue. Let's go ahead and debug real quick. Let's jump back into our uh, menu widget. And what we actually have a problem is we have our update cursor position. So what this is doing is this is set to come over here and grab our cursor position from this and update it. We're using this set to focus. We actually don't have focus anymore, so we can actually break this uh, connection. So it's true that this is no longer being ran off of here, but we have this function calling this, and it's rechecking it. So one of two options, we can have this also check which cursor and do that and update it. Or in this case, since we really don't need this uh, right now, let's go ahead and just break the connection. Save it, and then play. So now I can control the first, and I can control the second. So now we have two cursors, two controllers, one widget. Okay. Now let's make it so that we have um, two objects to select. Uh, close this. Do we have our selection? For the uh, selection, we actually don't have a button for it. Let's go ahead and make it. I'm going to make uh, another one of these. So custom event. This is going to be uh, cursor selection. I will also add in the input and the controller. Let's find a new spot for this. We're going to call this inside of our controller, so our player controller here. We need a button for it. Uh, I don't recall if we made one, so let's go up to project settings real quick. Input and input actions, input selection. Okay. So let's go ahead and get that. Input selection. I'll just steal the logic from this. And this will be the uh, cursor selection. Okay, compile that, save that. We'll jump back over to our widget. Uh, same logic. And then all we're going to do here is uh, change out who's going to be displayed. So we were using this system over here. But since we're no longer using the actual button uh, focus, these will no longer work. But I will copy uh, this part right here. So control C that. I'm going to hop over to here. Let's go ahead and paste this in. This will be the first one. And then I'll do a second for the second one. And this will be cursor index two. Okay. And then we're going to change this out for the text value. I'm going to swap this for a second player text value. Now, just to keep kind of this simple, 
Uh, I'm just going to swap the actual um, selection here. So this is supposed to be cursor index 1, and this is the um, selection value uh, 1. So let's go ahead and make selection value 2. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. We'll do player two. Player one. Move player one over there. Let's grab player two. Where are you? And just to have the other um, cursor index, why not? Let's go ahead and duplicate that as well. So this will be um, cursor index one. Just for deb debugging purposes, cursor index two. Let's see, that one's that one, that one, that one. We'll set index 2 to index 2. Compile that. Let's jump back over to the graph, and I'll swap out the value uh, for the second one. Save it, and let's go ahead and hit play. And now we should be able to um, press our button and look so player two has the cherry, or strawberry, banana, apple, so on. And player one has an apple, cherry, you know, banana, and what have you. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. In the next one, we'll take a look at making our buttons a little bit more dynamic uh, than running it off of um, two switches here. Because it's going to get pretty exhausting if you have a bunch of characters to select from and we may have to backpedal and just do the same thing for here so in the event that you wanted to use this using the actual buttons uh, we should take a look at how to utilize the same kind of system for that but uh, it should work for either one but anyway that's going to do it for this one make sure you save your work and i shall see you next time Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you've enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I do have official merch and a Patreon uh, somewhere uh, in the link down below. Updates for things that are coming along. Of course, we are at 1,000 subscribers, and that is awesome. Um, we're still doing voting for um, what project I'm going to work on next, like what big project I'm going to work on next. Uh, so make sure you head over there and do that. Also, keep your eye out for the devlogs for Blockout and Rocket Flip. Those are two games that are coming out for Lame Duck Studios, officially released and all that good stuff. And if you guys want to see how those are uh, being put together and the process that I've been going through, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, you'll be seeing those coming up uh, here soon. And don't forget that I create new content on Sundays and I release content on Wednesdays. So stay tuned, and I shall see you next time.